It has seemed right, before we turn away from this place in which we have laid the mortal remains of O'Donovan Rossa, that one amongst us should, in the name of all, speak the praise of that valiant man, and endeavour to formulate the thought and the hope that are in us as we stand around his grave. And if there's anything that makes it fitting that I, rather than some other, rather than one of the grey-haired men who are young with him and who shared in his labour and his suffering should speak here, it is perhaps that I may be taken as speaking on behalf of a new generation that has been rebaptized in the Fenian faith and that has accepted the responsibility of carrying out the Fenian programme. I now then propose that here by the grave of this unrepentant Fenian we renew our baptismal vows. That here by the grave of this unconquered and unconquerable man we ask of God, each one for himself, such unshakable purpose such high and gallant courage, such unbreakable strength of soul as belonged to O'Donovan Rossi. Deliberately here now, we avow ourselves, as he avowed himself in the dock, Irish men of one allegiance only. We of the Irish volunteers and you others who are associated with us in today's task and duty are bound together and must stand together henceforth in brotherly union for the achievement of the freedom of Ireland. And we know only one definition for freedom. It's Tone's definition. It's Mitchell's definition. It's Ross's definition. Let no man blaspheme the cause that dead generations of Ireland served by giving it any other name and definition than their name and their definition. We stand at Ross's grave today, not in sadness, but rather in exaltation of spirit, that it has been given to us come thus into so close a communion with that brave and splendid gale. Splendid and holy causes are served by men who are themselves splendid and holy. O'Donovan Rossa was splendid in the proud manhood of him, splendid in the heroic grace of him, splendid in the Gaelic strength and clarity and truth of him. And all that splendour and pride and strength was compatible with a humility and a simplicity of devotion to Ireland, to all that was olden and beautiful and Gaelic in Ireland. The simplicity and holiness of patriotism of a Michael O'Cleary or an Ono Growney. The clear true eyes of this man, almost alone in his day, visioned Ireland as we of today would surely have her. Not free merely, but Gaelic as well. Not Gaelic merely, but free as well. And now, in a closer spiritual communion with him now than ever before, or perhaps ever again, in communion of spirit too with those of his day, living and dead, in communion of spirit too with our own dear comrades who suffer in English prisons today, and speaking on their behalf, as well as our own, we pledge to Ireland our love, and we pledge to English rule in Ireland our hate. This is a place of peace, sacred to the dead, where men should speak with all charity and with all restraint. But I hold it a Christian thing, as O'Donovan Rossa held it, to hate evil, to hate untruth, to hate oppression, and hating them, to strive to overthrow them. Our foes are strong and wise and wary, but strong and wise and wary as they are, they cannot undo the miracles of God, who ripens in the hearts of young men the seed sown by young men of a former generation. And the seed sown by the young men of 65 and 67 are coming to their miraculous ripening today. <laughs> Rulers and defenders of the realm had need to be wary if they would guard against such processes. Life springs from death, and from the graves of patriot men and women spring living nations. The defenders of the realm have worked well in secret and in the open. They think they have pacified Ireland. They think they have purchased half of us and intimidated the other half. They think they have foreseen everything. They think they have provided against everything. But the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our Fenian dead. And while Ireland holds these graves, Ireland unfree shall never 